Yeah, not what you were expecting, huh? Hi, I'm Jonius and welcome back to the channel. For those who weren't aware, anyone watching the Pokemon Journeys anime from August 12th until September 16th will see an exclusive code at the end of each episode which can be used to claim all the Pokemon in Ash's team. Except for Pikachu, you can only obtain him by watching any of the three Pokemon movies being re-released in Japanese cinemas. Originally, this video was going to be me assembling the whole Avengers, maxing them out to level 100, changing their natures to good ones, and maxing out their IVs to see if I can take this exact team into a couple of Wi-Fi matches and win with them. Except... While Ash recently defeated Cynthia and became the second strongest trainer in the fucking world, if you put him into a VGC environment, he would get destroyed on sight and in one hit. Being depressed by this revelation, I was about to give up on this video altogether. But when I told a few of my Discord friends about the news, one of them, who I won't name for privacy reasons, but for the 0.1% chance that he's watching this, you know who you are, and thanks for the idea, gave me an alternative idea of talking about the weaknesses in Ash's Journeys team. Now you're probably wondering, why is this video shorter than before? That's because this can be answered in 5 minutes or less. It's very simple, here, come closer, I'll tell you what it is. His team is vulnerable to Psychic, Dragon, Ice, Ground, and Fairy types. And also Pikachu. Pikachu busted. Pikachu, Pikachu, bust, Pikachu, bust, Pikachu, bust, Pikachu, bust, Pikachu, 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 Pikachu. The stuff he's able to pull off in the show is impressive from a writing point. Ash has this unpredictability to his tactics that aren't possible in the main game, but it's a spectacle to witness. However, he doesn't have a lot of counters and coverages to make up for the disadvantages he has, and it can be exploited by players who know what they're doing. According to the event codes for all of Ash's Pokemon, some of them came with their hidden abilities like Gengar with Cursed Body and Dracovish with Strong Jaw, while others came with their best natures like Dragonite with her Jolly nature. By themselves or with a team that can cover their weaknesses, everyone except Pikachu can be extremely viable with a party that's built around a certain strategy. But for all of them under Ash's care, it's a losing situation altogether just from the type disadvantage alone. First, there's Pikachu. He may be a different breed in the anime and in Smash Bros, and can hold his ground independently. In his home series, however, he's mostly unusable. His special attack and overall defense are bad and need to rely on the light ball item, which when used boosts its attack and special attack stats. Having a baby mon on a competitive team is already bad as his base stats aren't enough for Pikachu to survive on the battlefield. So by having him on the party, you only have 5 other Pokemon with type disadvantages to rely on. Sure, he's fast, but most Pokemon can outspeed him so easily that it's not worth it, as well as Ash's Pikachu not having the lightning rod ability which raises its special attack when hit by a lightning move. If you ever see a good VGC player that's using a Pikachu, chances are it's equipped with a good nature, a light ball, and a hidden ability. Secondly, as I mentioned before, most of Ash's Journeys team can be useful under proper preparations and different teams that can cover their weaknesses. Ash's Gengar, for instance, is weak against Pokemon who are Psychic or Ground types. His defense is subpar despite being able to dish out strong special attacks. His special code also grants him the aforementioned Cursed Body ability, in which there's a 30% chance that the Cursed Body will disable that move of the attacking Pokemon for 4 turns. But even with this great ability and strong special attacks, it only takes 1 or 3 super effective hits to knock him down. Dragonite and Dracovish are the chunkiest of the group. Both of their defenses are good and in the case of the Orange Dragon also has good offensive capabilities, but he's easily destroyed by Dragon, Ice, Rock, and Fairy type moves. The only way I see him surviving any attack like that is if he's able to set up Dragon Dance, but it's a miracle in itself without having the enemy Pokemon take him down in one or two hits. And the fact that Ash's Dragonite doesn't come with multi-skill, a hidden ability that reduces damage taken from damage dealing moves by half on at maximum HP, makes it a glass cannon and can be defeated easily. The same almost goes for his Dracovish. This specific fossil Pokemon does come with a strong jaw ability, which increases the power of the Pokemon's biting moves by 50%, but without a good nature or a choice scarf to back it up, Dracovish's base stats makes him slow to even endure a Pokemon that has a super effective attack. Finally, that leaves us with Surfitch and Lucario. After the recent battle with Cynthia, I'm convinced that these two are Ash's strongest Pokemon in the current season. They specialize in melee offense that can pack a serious punch up close, but both of them can be defeated by Psychic and Fire types. Both of their special codes don't come with a good nature or hidden ability, although Surfage does come with a leak item, which increases its critical hate ratio slightly. But like Pikachu and Gengar, they can both be knocked down easily due to their low defense. To many of you, this all feels uneventful, and that's because it is. In conclusion, Ash's Journeys team isn't viable in competitive play due to the things I mentioned. At the end of the day, this team in the anime isn't the same as its in-game counterpart, especially in a place where other players will decimate them within minutes. Sure, each of Ash's Pokemon has their moments in the show, but sadly none of that translates well into the VGC landscape. 
I'm not trying to discredit any achievements Ash has done throughout Pokemon Journeys. I'm proud of him for defeating Cynthia, Steven, and countless other opponents on his way to the top. I look forward to his grand finals match against Leon in the Masters Tournament. I just don't think it's worth spending time grinding resources on a team that has a baby mom with weak stats, and 5 out of the 6 Pokemon having huge type disadvantages in a meta where they don't stand a chance unless they have other party members that can counter their weaknesses. Even though his team doesn't translate well in competitive Sword and Shield, I'm still looking forward to what Ash and his team can do in their final battle, whenever that happens. Because that fight and most of the tournament will be history for the books. Except for Leon vs. Diantha, I'm still salty about that fight being rushed. Fuck that.